Ooh, welcome back to the weekly top 36, top 40. We actually got the top 46 running back rankings for week three of fantasy football. As always, Underdog Fantasy has got you with a completely free square. Half a yard for Aaron Rodgers on Thursday night football. It is just free money they're giving out to you. So if you're not yet on Underdog Fantasy, go download it. Use promo code BDGE. The best part about it, the best part about it is not only do you get that free square, but you also get our rankings for free for the rest of the year. You get access to the Big Dog membership. But we're here to give you some free content, and that is the Top 46 running back rankings for week three. Now, we're going to go a, a little bit of a different direction here based on some of the suggestions from you guys, based on some thoughts and big brain galaxy stuff uh, from myself. I'm going to be playing a hosting role, and this is going to be more of a debate style where we go through the biggest discrepancies between Adam and Andrew's rankings, and then I will kind of throw my two cents in, tell them where I think they're wrong, where they're right, and I will award a point based on each player's arguments for these players and then we can look back on it the following week Judge and jury and executioner yes Can't i am tell by the tie literally everything i say is what actually goes so everyone's sits our decisions have to be based off of the way i think okay we're gonna go through all the way down 12 chunks at a time and as you know the feedback has come in we're going to be kind of skipping through the top 12 ish really quickly because no one has to make sit start decisions based on those guys i think it's uh relatively useless to spend a lot of time on those so start it's just start it's no, just no sit you start and that's pretty much you know all the way through like the top 15 but if you haven't checked the uh the injury reports guys on ir uh there's a lot of attrition already man it's, it's, I, it's, it's getting fun. ugly. It's mo, not mo, Me and Andrew were talking about If you're sitting pre-show. these people, I don't know who you drafted with. I have, I have questions. Yeah. Correct. All right, so we'll just run through the top 12 for you guys very, very quickly. Consensus, Brees Hall at one. Bijan Robinson, Saquon Barkley, Jordan Mason up there at four. Devon Achan at five. Kamara at six. Jonathan Taylor at seven. Jameer Gibbs at eight. Derek Henry at nine. James Cook at 10. James Conner at 11. Travis Etienne at 12. And maybe we'll push through just the top 15. We got Jacobs at 13, Brian Robinson at 14, Rashad White at 15. Now let's start the debate between the next eight. We've got Ramondre at 16. Now we have a nine spot difference here. Adam, you're all the way up at 12 for Ramondre. Andrew, you're down at 21. Now you were on the right side of history with Ramondre <laughs> last week when we were both telling you you're an idiot. You're stupid. Your brain is about this big. And you said, nah, Ramondre going to be fine. Ramondre ate last week. So you are, again, high on him. You have him as an RB1. Andrew, you are lower, uh, an RB2, facing a maybe not that stout Jets defense. Let's let's hear what you got for Ramondre. It may not be that stout. And, and looking at my ranking, I, I'm not conceding at this point, but it does feel like it is maybe a little bit low. But I also just – it's tough for me to look at this Patriots offense – and believe that they're going to continue being this effective each and every week. Like, I feel like we're, it's been two weeks now, so I feel a little bit better than I did just after week one, but it still feels like this is a little bit of a fairy tale for New England. So uh, I'm putting a little bit of pump in the brakes there. I just think that there's better guys that I would rather start. Like, I'm more confident throwing out a guy like David Montgomery, who I know is going to be in a high scoring matchup. I know is going to get, you know, these goal line works. And we also saw. Uh, Antonio Gibson last week not that it really affected Ramondre but he got a little bit more involved and I feel like he's going to continue to get a little bit more and a little bit more involved Ramondre looks good he looks like if you drafted him you know where you drafted him you got a value top 12 each and every week I it's just not where I'm at with him right now what about reality in the past is not going to meet the future I guess is my question Gibson looked good on a couple carries but his his involvement as far as touches wasn't any different I see a guy right now that even if the game script is changing that again had five targets last week like yeah. this guy I think is still he's playing uh 72 percent of snaps last week the week prior 78 percent of snaps this is this is the new version of a bell cow you can hate him you can do whatever you want to with the rhino I'm just telling you where you should have him as a running back one the last two weeks and I don't see why that changes playing the New York football jets like this is the new version of a bell cow I like that quote I think I'm gonna use that on the Instagram quote template Camden that one's for you uh, you, <laughs> you thought I wasn't gonna come with a, with a fucking <laughs> meme a on the, you came with a fucking apron and utensils brother <laughs> it's a picture of Carson Steele this is the new version <laughs> of <a> <laughs> <cow>. <laughs> I'm gonna put Chase Brown and Julio McLaughlin as the fucking poster child for it, I love it. you thought we weren't gonna have a meme the first time so I, I'm assuming I gotta come up uh <laughs> Yeah, I think you definitely have to come up. I need a gavel to give you 
a Dude. point. I'm going to give a point to Adam there. Uh, okay. I am definitely closer to Ramondre being top 12. I think this New York Jets defense has looked way worse than we thought they would. They're to be had. Quinnen Williams is great in the middle, but Bryce Huff, it's looking like that's a, a big missing piece that went over to the Eagles. They now just lost Jermaine Johnson, so their <laughs> pass rush. And their just uh, defensive line is looking a lot more questionable than we thought it would Coming into the year, uh, Ramondre is just taking such a big workload, and their offensive game plan clearly is to go through the running backs. Whether or not that's a lot of Gibson or Ramondre, it's it's both of them getting a decent amount of work. So point for Mr. Adam on that one. We've got Montgomery at 17, Kyron Williams at 18, Pollard at 19, Zach Charbonnet at 20, and then Mixon, I think we can argue this, but I'm just assuming that the lapse in, in ranking here where Adam, you're at 26. Andrew, you're up at 19. This is more of like uncertainty in the injury related. This this, this is, uh, I think, injury related, but it's also Andrew being very, uh, you know, non biased on his Joe Mixon love too. Hmm. Okay, so maybe there is an argument to be I, had. I, just, here. I, I feel like we both are. I don't know where you rank them. My my ranking is reflective of at the moment, given everything I haven't heard. I'm I'm not confident that he's guaranteed to be playing this week. I don't think it's anything long term yeah. problem. I agree. I, I think for me, the, the ranking with Mixon at 19 was really just, I don't want to put him anywhere high because I'm not confident that he's playing this week. I've heard chatter of maybe Cam Akers, maybe Damian Pierce. That being said, you know, I pushed him down my rankings. But then I also thought, and I'm like, all right, well, if I got to, you know, tell you today, am I going to start Joe Mixon or am I going to start Charbonnet? Like, I'm just going to tell you to start Joe Mixon until we get more practice reports and hear something like that. So that's kind of where I went with that one. Other than that, like, Mixon's ranking is going to change throughout the week based on what we hear. Yeah, let's yeah, say, sure. I, I would say right now, obviously we're recording this on Wednesday, very early morning, so we have no practice reports for like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, depending on when you guys watch this. I think it's probably 50-50 right now. Mixon plays next week. The way, the way I think about it, the reason I have him at 26 is like, all right, if I'm – Let's. I was. If, if I pretend that a lot of the other players that I'm ranking around him are playing on Thursday, and I only have Mixon as my other option, mm. that's why I have him down there. That's like, a that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, that's like, fair. I was gonna say the only thing is all of those other players around him do play on Sunday, so we do get to. Right. No, I, I'm just. Saying, I'm <laughs> using the standpoint of like if if I don't if I have no idea on Mixon, where would I basically put him over some of these other guys fair. if I wasn't so, at risk? Yeah. It? So I mean, like realistically, like we don't have Antonio Gibson here. He's way down, but if. If you were in a position where you have a bunch of injuries and you're literally like Joe Mixon or Antonio Gibson, and those are my only options, right now, in a way, what you guys are saying is based off the limited information. Most people will be able to pick up somebody else, I guess, for the Sundays. For sure. But you'd probably ride it out and see what's good with Mixon and, and take a lesser option Exactly. If and, then if, and then if all of a sudden Mixon's not going to play on Saturday, I'm adding, you know, the best available on the wire. Yeah. Definitely. So no points awarded there. I think it's just good old fashioned just, business and fun there. It's just a couple. It's a couple. Uh, you know, shots. Nothing. Just a couple dudes. Injury being caveat. Dudes. Um, one thing I kind of want to circle back on. You guys are not in a different sphere or range here, but Kyron Williams, San Francisco, mm -hmm. sixteen eighteen. I will just say I am extremely worried about that offense. Me too. Like really, really, really worried to the point where. How are you feeling? You okay? I'm worried. I'm scared. I'm. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can get through the rest of the video. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are three other offensive linemen ha are out now for... Yeah, know, another one injured last week. Another one injured last week. Cooper Cup, Puka are both out. I don't know how they're going to move the ball. I'm hearing rumors already that Demarcus Robinson is next. What do you, what do you mean how they're not going <laughs> to move the ball? We, I feel like we have a lot of optimism in general about players. We just don't want to hear negative stuff. Matthew Stafford for the Rams have been, has been a tale of two different teams. And the 2022 version of the Rams was not pretty. And it's feeling like we might be getting the 24 version to be worse. Yeah, like I, I, I tweeted this out, um, and maybe I should have waited till the wide receiver video, but like the pass blocking grade for the Rams right now on PFF is is at 29, which is, I went back and looked over the last 15 years, which they have data for. There's never been a season where a team's pass blocking grade has finished below 43. They're at 29 right now through two weeks. Obviously, they'll probably get up because that's like a very small sample size. But that gives you the state of which like Matt Stafford got, got sacked five times by the Arizona Cardinals last week. Their offensive line can't block a single thing. Well, that, that's what actually like uh, if you go back to the 22 year where their offensive line was really bad too, they had to put Kyron in just as a he, – he's a better blocker. Kate yeah. Akers was always bad at blocking. And then you think about this, like Matt Stafford is one of the few guys I would say at this point in the league that's a, that is a statue. Like, this dude's not going to be able to move, so yeah, it's a big problem. A Dude, I, I'm worried, too, because, you know, 
now that there's no protection, Stafford hasn't been the healthiest either. So it's like we could be getting the the vibes really are scared. bad there. So I only bring that up because you know Kyron's kind of in the realm of Tony Pollard and Zach Charbonnet, and at this point. I'm probably leaning with a guy like Pollard over Kyron Williams because I'm terrified of that offense. I, I will am. say Nick Bosa, good chance he's actually out for this game, so a little bit of a boost to the Rams. But, like, <laughs> regardless, the pressure that they're going to get in that backfield is going to be bad. Yeah, agreed. Um, I don't see much upside, honestly. Yeah, right. So that's why I'm like, okay, no upside, maybe move him down a little bit. We got Mixon at 21, Dobbins at 22, Jones at 23, Zach Moss at 24. And that rounds out, you know, the top 24 running backs. We got the RB2s. I want to address jo- uh, Dobbins for a second because I feel like I was doing my rankings and I'm like, I can't put him anywhere. You barely snuck him in the top 24. I just, Why? but then he's a top five running back both weeks that he's played now. And I'm like, I feel like both of us having him 20 or lower, it's like, it almost feels disrespectful. But I also know that the matchups that he had is not Pittsburgh. Uh, so I guess it's going to be a true test, but I'm excited. to be honest, based off of what we've seen so far, we are both very low. I, uh, on Dobbins. Agreed. I mean... I, my doc I, both y'all a point. I, I, I guess, well, Andrew's, Andrew's literally, as we're moving on, trying to get us negative for points. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm try, but but I, am try, I am trying to figure, like, I don't know how high you're going to have him. Uh, <laughs> Andrew's like the, the kid in class where he's like, teacher, you got to check our homework, yeah. but he also didn't do it. <laughs> That's basically what just happened. Wait, right there. wait, weren't we supposed to do this assignment? Yeah. Uh, I kind of... <laughs> This is going to end up talking about a conversation we should be having later. But, like, to me, Gus Edwards, I don't see a lot of upside. But in that game last week, I know it's not Pittsburgh again. But 18 carries. Like, 18 carries is a long of six yards. Brother. As long as run was six yards on 18 the movie, carries. The movie it's Longest good. Yard felt to be bad. So, someone commented. I, I, I tweeted that stat out. I said, Gus had 18 carries, six yards. Someone said, yeah, the Gus bus was only making local stops last <laughs> week. I like that. I was like, that's a fucking I like that. but, but, like, I... JK's had some uh, really good runs, but the efficiency for him has been off the charts. So This, this D-line from Pittsburgh is going to be the ultimate fucking test. Though, dude, the two yeah. highest-graded tackles last week in the entire NFL, Joe Alt or Sean Slater. Dub. Both of them. Dub. Joe Alt, Joe Alt, the lead, bro. Him versus Watt is going to be a um, featured That film. was a bar last week, wasn't that was, it? Yeah, I, that is – if Joe Alt, like, has a long career and that is Sticks? his nickname, that might – end up being my favorite football nickname of all time. Like an all-timer, for sure. All-time. Joe yeah. Altelite is it, so good. That might be so good that we get back to the old school, like, everybody has to have a nickname, mm. like, from back in the day. Like, everybody just had a nickname, they call him. Now we're going to get back to that. I just I like found that. out, actually, today that P. Ryan, I was doing some research on P. Ryan, you know his Oklahoma nickname was Optimus P. Ryan? Mm, that was pretty good. That's I mean, he cool. was him at Oklahoma. Kind of cool. P. Ryan was so good at Oklahoma. Yeah, we can get to him later. Random I, don't, I feel like the days of him being him feel a lot. He's not guess, Optimus but, uh, P. Ryan anymore. No, no, no. Maybe. Uh, All right, let's keep moving down. We've got Najee Harris at 25. You guys don't have too many fucking differences in the rankings. We can't have these crazy. damn arguments. We're going to have to start I was getting gonna, that's why, well, I went to the next logical one at Gus Bus. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna have to start getting a little bit picky here. Najee Harris at 25. D. Swift at 26, uh, Jerome Ford at 27, Devin Singletary 28, Zamir White at 29. Let's circle back to DeAndre Swift. Okay. There's not a big difference here in rankings, but we had a conversation pre-show where you're like, I think I have to sit DeAndre Swift Cause I for have him in this week. Idiot league mates. So. You have him in the league that we're playing Naturally, together. You have now him in that league. I'm gonna push back on that. I've been an anti-Swift guy all summer. It hasn't looked good for Chicago. Their interior, their offensive line is bad. However, the Indy run defense might be like the worst position group of any position group in the NFL at this point. They're allowing like 250 rushing yards per game. They just put DeForest Buckner, who is a force on the IR. They're down their their best cornerback. I believe they're down their best safety. Like their defense is banged up to a level that it's almost like the Chicago Bears offensive line doesn't actually matter. So Swift's usage has been good. About a 70% snap guy right. getting the carries. This is one of my concerns. Like, the guy can't read a fucking hole, so if he doesn't have big holes in the offensive line, it's a problem. I just don't think this indie defensive line is something that I'm nervous about. So if there was a week that I would put Swift in my lineup, it's probably this week. I'm less nervous about the defense and less nervous about Swift as a talent than I am about Shane go. Waldron's play calling in he's, this offense as a whole. He's the woke. Yeah. It's actually scary. Yeah, yeah and, the, 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 the usage in... He's actually had an elite role. It's just uh, right. there's nothing about this offense to be attached to that's anywhere near elite, period. And, and that's kind of why I liked him a little bit coming into the year was because there's a chance for an elite role here, and it does look like he has it. But like I said, it's just I feel like I put him out there two weeks in a row now. I'm sure other fantasy managers are feeling the same way where it's like I just feel like he's 
I could have done better if I was playing guys like Alexander Madison <laughs> instead of throwing in uh, Swift. And it's just like I'm getting to the point where it's like, can I trust him? He keeps getting the you know, 14-point projection on ESPN or the 15-point projection on Sleeper, and then he goes out and gives me four. Yeah, the projections are out of control. Yeah, the projections. You can just forget the projections. So so you're telling me I need to start him this week? Depending on who your other options are. Yoshivash, uh, like Gabe Davis, like these are these are flex options. I would definitely start him over Gabe. Uh, Yoshivash is interesting, I guess, based off the T. Higgins status. I think T. Higgins is probably more likely to play than not, but still up in the air. Yoshivash versus Washington is a great matchup. So so close, but I, I I think Swift can can get into people's lineups this week. Well, yeah, I I, I would have had um I would have had Swift at twenty four, but I'm just like Washington's defense. So far, what I've seen, what they allowed to happen with Malik Neighbors, I know that's not the run game, but I mean, I question, I question went for nearly 100 on the ground. Yeah, yeah. and I, I question everything about this defense entirely, and the fact that I don't, I know Zach Moss is an elite, but he could be just for a week. Their their interior D line was like supposed to be a good run, like they got Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne and like these good fuckers up front, but like that hasn't worked either. They traded the actual good ones. Yeah, you know what happens when you fucking uh, get rid and, of Chase Young and Montez Sweat. That's not true. Chase Young is not better than John Al- Jonathan Allen or Deron Payne, brother. Talent, yeah. talent doesn't always. It looks worse this year. It looks worse this year. You know why? Because you hired Dan Quinn and fucking Cliff Kingsbury. <laughs> People <laughs> think that Dan Quinn is like this defensive goat. He had the Legion of Boom, and then he has Micah Parsons in his elite. Fu- the Atlanta Falcons had the worst defense in the NFL for like a half a decade under Dan Quinn. Like, we're not going to get I into it. I still think they should have hired Ben Johnson. But I think they could have went with a million other directions outside of the fucking duo that they went with in Cliff Kingsbury and yep. Dan Quinn. It was the worst coaching duo that they could have ever hired. You remember that little thing that came out where it was like Ben Johnson was botching his interviews and he yeah. wasn't like, whatever. Ben Johnson in Chicago next year is going to be a fucking movie. Caleb and Ben Johnson is mm-hmm. crazy. Or T-Law and Ben Johnson. Either one. That uh, Cl- Clint Kubiak in fucking Jacksonville. Oh. Also movie. Should have been in Chicago this year. It's going to be a fucking sequel. What is, what is happening? <laughs> All right, let's, let's continue Coach moving down. Baby. We've got Devin Singletary at 28, Zamir White at 29. I guess, you know, listen, we're going to have to get slim pickings here. Uh, Zamir White, Adam, you got him at 31, Andrew at 28. You want me to go? I mean, I don't care. Carolina, this, baby. The, Carolina, here's what I, I feel about this matchup. Carolina is as good of a matchup as you can have. That said, I, I don't know two weeks in that he's even the guy. I, I have two different pictures as far as who they're playing. I mean, he's definitely the guy in terms of carries. He's getting like 14, 15 a game. He just kind of stinks. He got a little bit more receiving work last week, too. Not a ton, but... He played 68% of snaps last week. The week prior, he played like 30% of snaps. And all that I have from Pierce is that he plans to ride the hot hand. Yeah. So, I think it's game script related, which I feel like leans more towards Zemir White probably this week in Carolina. Sure. If he if he ends up going like fifteen for eighty and a <laughs> touchdown this week, I don't think I'd be too surprised. I wouldn't, but at the same time, that the reason I have him at thirty one is I wouldn't be surprised. I know this is going to sound crazy now. If Mister September all of a sudden has this game a lot more competitive than we think too, and all of a sudden they're not in a game script to be running all the time. It so. could be. I I just think the defense is still weak. Even if the <laughs> offense is good, the defense is still weak. I think Zamir he's just going to you know be able to take that early down work. It's much easier than. You know, some of the other matchups that he's got to start off the year, going against Baltimore, going against stuff like that. That's that's tough, man. And there's honestly in a game like this, I'm also kind of factoring in that I think there's a pretty solid chance he finds the end zone. I, I, I agree with that. Like Carolina without Derek Brown is they, they got nothing going on on that defensive side of the ball. So um, I, I won't award, award in a point, but I, I just figured it was uh, worth talking about that because he's definitely someone on like the flex spectrum there that I think people are kind of uh, going back and forth on. Yeah. We can. Round out the 36 here. Eckler, Chuba, Zeke, Bucky, Gus Edwards, and Jalen Warren. Let's talk about Jalen Warren. I, I do want to get into this. And, Andrew, you're higher. You have him as a top 34 back. Adam, you're down at 38. Yeah. So, it almost feels like he can't. He won't get into lineups for you if you have him down at 38. He can. You are willing to flex him. In a pinch, yes. Okay, let's hear it. Yeah, I think just for me, I look at what he did last week. Uh, got a little bit more involved in this offense. Um, overall... Saw or he went from 31% of the snaps in week one to 48% of the snaps last week. Just getting more work in the receiving game. Saw a lot less of Cordero Patterson. I think he's just he's healthier now. He's kind of resumed that complimentary piece to Najee Harris. And in a matchup here against the Chargers, it is going to be low scoring, uh, but he should still get some of the receiving work. He should still get some of the rushing work that I think he's flex worthy. Uh, I'm not obviously expecting him to go crazy, but you know if you want. Eight, nine, ten points in your flex. I think he can do that for you. 
Okay. I, I, I guess for me, I just don't, I just don't get it um, at all, really, because especially with Fields playing now, like I don't really see the upside even for the pass catching department for him personally. Like I don't think he's going to get north of fifty percent of snaps without something of Najee Harris having a problem or an injury. So I just don't see the opportunity being that high, as well as. Like, I don't think he's going to get put in on the goal line, and I just don't think there's a ton of pass-catching work to be had when I think Fields will take off and run. So so if he's not going to get north of 50, last week's 48% isn't right. good enough? No, I'm saying that, but I'm saying, no, my point is that's probably the role he's going to continue to have. So in, in, now they're playing the Chargers. He, there's not a lot of pass-catching upside with a guy like Fields. I just don't, I don't really see the upside for Jalen Warren. I feel like if I'm going to get down to this range, right, I think there's players that, like at this point I'm trying to just shoot my shot on what would be the upside if things broke right. I don't. I don't really see a lot of, of upside more than just like, you know, three catches, four catches, and Fair. that's helping you get a floor. If last week is the expectation, it's not going to change at all. He finishes the running back 34 last week. Right. And I, and it, I guess what is the upside? Like, if you see it going well for Jalen Warren, what does that look like? Going in another week healthier, just a tiny bit more involvement. You know, maybe he is getting to 48 uh, or 50%, whatever, maybe a little bit more receiving work. Eventually – you know, Justin Fields getting more comfortable. This offense isn't just going for 150 yards a game, like taking that step forward. That's kind of what I would think with Warren. But obviously, I'm not projecting that this week. Still 34 for me, but kind of just what Nick said. Like, I don't think he's a guy that we need to force to our bench. Hmm. So my my take on this is I, I think it goes both ways. Like, one, you look at the game script and – 35 and a half point over under. Something like that. It's yeah. like the lowest of the entire year. This should be an extremely they're, slow. They're going to be – look at Pittsburgh's games. I'm telling you it's going to be, if, if not the worst, one of the lowest scoring totals, period. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, a shitty game. I will say, though, as Jalen Warren has gotten more healthy, he's definitely gotten more work. We saw his snaps and, more uh, more importantly, his third down and, and passing down role snaps flip with Najee Harris. So he is now retaining the role that we imagine him having going into the year. That being said, again – Russ is throwing 25 passes a game, maybe. Justin. Justin Fields. Or Justin Fields is, <laughs> is throwing 25 passes a game. They have a very clear plan for what they want to do. So, ultimately, I land for sure somewhere in the middle. I don't <laughs> I, I don't know that I would, like, force him out of my lineup, but I don't think I want him in my lineup either. No, I also think, though, you know, we talked about it earlier. Fantasy managers' teams right now are banged up. Yeah, they're in we shambles. We don't have anybody <laughs> available. So, like, people are going to have to choose between Warren and right. guys like Ty Chandler or Samaji P. Ryan or Ty, uh, that, that's, Tajay Spears. You're right. And and I think if I had to lean one way, I would probably lean your way and say I would put him in my flex over those types of players. I, I feel like when you look at Jalen Warren, though, when he scored well, He's had a long touchdown or has gotten passing volume. And I, you look at, at the past, it's like, can he pick it? Guys are just going to check the ball. No, Justin Fields isn't doing that. This offense isn't the thing mm. of the past. Y'all do that if you want to. I'm going to just – I don't care if I'm right or wrong. I'll, I'll take the minus point. <laughs> I want to help y'all. It's not minus. It's There's just not, plus a point for me. You don't get a minus. Set a line for me. Full PPR points for Jalen Warren this week. Over, under. Nine and a half. I'm going to take the lower on that. The lower on that. Yep. Sounds like we have a decision. I'm going to take the lower on that, and because of that, I think I'm going to give the point to Adam. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, but let's see. Let's so get if into I said eight and a half. I don't think that actually changed. It, it, it just made it. me like uh, visualize how I think he's going to perform. You know what? That, but that exercise was a good use of what I was trying to say. If I'm if I'm in this range, my ranking at 38 is because I have to put him somewhere, honestly. But if I'm in the pinch and I'm thinking about okay. I'm at my flex spot, and I'm, I'm having to put in Jalen Warren or Ty Chandler. That means my team's probably not that good. I'd rather shoot my shot on someone that I think has, if things break right, going to have potentially some goal line carries, I potentially more pass work. I will say, too, just what I usually do in my leagues and how I like to operate is, like, if I'm choosing between flex options like this, go find me a damn wide receiver. I do not want to flex PPR, this running yeah. back. Give me the wide receiver off the waiver wire, Tyler Johnson, Juwan Jennings, whatever, and I'll play them over Jalen Warren. The other, the other reason I have him down at 38, my, my last point is like as a tiebreaker, we're, if we're, ranking in a, I, I, we're ranking these at half PPR, and in half PPR especially, like I just don't see the upside. Fair. Fair enough. But you like Tajay Spears. <laughs> yeah, I let's, do. Let's move into a situation that is kind of overtaking the fantasy space right now in general, and that is the Kansas City backfield. I hate so it. we have Pacheco out for six, eight, ten weeks, whatever. Carson Steele, Samaja Pirine, who was signed in late August. Kareem Hunt signed to the practice squad. I don't know if – I haven't seen any reports. He's unlikely to play this week. He's not going to play this He's week. He's not going to play this week. They play the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now, Adam, you have Samaja at 40. Andrew, you have him at 37. Mm-hmm. 
You guys both have Carson Steele lower than that. Yes. Talk to me. Talk to me about that situation, how you see it playing out. Oh, you want me? Uh, well, you can. I, I've been thinking about this. I think, for me, I'm going to probably end up moving Steele ahead of P. Ryan, but okay. I'm not moving. This e- is the argument I wanted. You're going to stay with P. Ryan over Steele? No. Okay. You're, you're, you're going to you're gonna move Steele over P. Ryan? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I've cr- I've, since I did this ranking yesterday, I started doing my waivers for – Yeah, I would definitely take Steele over And P. I've Ryan. started prioritizing Steele over good. P. Ryan. Yeah, and, and good, good. it's – to me, like I, I don't know. This is one of those things that I, I'm, I don't have a lot of certainty at all as far as what is actually going to be taking place snap share wise and who's going to get what role. I think it's going to be ugly. I, I, I agree with that point. That's why I have both of them uh, sub forty. So yep. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to wait and see for a week, then be wrong about either one. But I, I just know this. So Maj P Ryan. People have been trying to sell me this narrative of Samaj P Ryan can be the old version of him. But when, where? I, this is, I guess, as good as the opportunity is going to be, but. Is that I feel like I I mean I don't I don't feel like I've heard that argument at all. I just think people are think he's gonna have a pass catching role. There've there've uh definitely been some some chatter in the last couple of days on some of these other channels about P Ryan being This is the moment we've been waiting for. It's like he didn't have it in all these <laughs> other places it wasn't there. So fantasy I feel like is just filled with straw man arguments. Like people are just like saying things that we like just no wanna one's, make if, P. if there's Ryan a name bad. but if there's somebody that has a strong man name is Carson Steele. I mean, come on. I'm 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 Carson I'm team Carson Steele. When Here's, I look at these rankings, sorry, Andrew, I'm gonna have to ask you to shut the fuck up for a minute. <laughs> when I when I look at Carson Steele, who's likely gonna be a starter for Kansas City, and I see him eight spots lower than Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke it's coming off of an atrocious game. And week one wasn't really that good either. He just happened to score a touchdown. And they're playing against Baltimore. Like, both of those guys are going to be in committees where they're probably getting 45% of the snaps. Give me the starting Kansas City running back over what we've seen from Dallas. Like, Carson Steele, for me, is a low-end wide receiver three. Like, I am... Running back. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, running back three. I'm starting him over Zeke. I'm starting... Like, that whole bottom tier there of Zeke, Bucky, Bucky. Irvin, Jalen Warren, yeah. I'm starting steel over those guys without a doubt. So I would move him pretty significantly up my rankings and and maybe even further up. Like, I think you can make the uh, argument of him over maybe Javante. Javante, maybe not because the Tampa Bay run D is really banked up, Vita Bay, et cetera. But like, I think he deserves to be in that conversation for right the, now. The reason I'll just say this too. The reason I had him at 43 and when I did these rankings, the Kareem Hunt news was fresh, and I'm like, if they play this dude yeah, too, I don't want to play anybody. So yep. now that he's definitely not going to play, it sounds like, yep. uh, Carson Steele would be the one that I prefer to play of the two. And I think Carson Steele, I think that's a good conversation to have. I, I'd put him in the mid-low 30s probably. Yeah. Somewhere I think there. he's super flexible. Um, Samaj P. Ryan for me is, I'm not putting him in my don't. lineup. Yeah, uh, so so I, I just want to kind of say too, because when we were doing these rankings yesterday, it was kind of, like you said, the, the news was fresh. Carson Steele, his ECR was really low. Um, in fact, I was going to make him my deep cut running back of the week because he was like 46 or 47. Oh he always and, be trying to do that. And look, <laughs> look, it ain't going to happen. Uh, <laughs> so that being said, I think for me, the way that I profile it, at least this week, because we all do know Kareem Hunt is coming. Like he is going to be involved in this eventually. But this week... I think Steele is definitely the guy that you can play because what I want to bet on is the goal line work and the goal line carry and an offense that's likely to score touchdowns. And I think that's going to be Steele. I know, you know, there is a little bit of risk. The argument for Pirine would be that with Pacheco out, this team goes a little bit more pass heavy because they have been run heavy with Pacheco. Maybe they go a little more pass heavy. They're definitely going to go more pass heavy. And Pirine profiles is the better uh, pass blocker. And the pass catcher. Yeah, I guess my my pushback on that would be that, like, they're going to go more pass-heavy in neutral game scripts and, like, first and second down. But if Steele is the player that's playing on early downs, then that also goes his way. Like, you could say the same thing with Pacheco. Like, if they're more pass-heavy, then Pacheco on first and second downs also becomes more valuable. And he did. Like, you're seeing, you were seeing a lot of targets there. Is there a chance? Because the way that I view this, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Carson Steele profiles as the early down grinder, P. Ryan is a pass catcher, but Kareem Hunt's kind of both of those guys for them. So is there a chance that, you know, one, two, three weeks down the line here, instead of us debating Steele or P. Ryan, it's just Kareem Hunt? Uh, no, with that, what you're saying there to me is that unless someone ends up playing really well and becomes like Kareem Hunt takes the, all the snaps, it's just going to be a muddled mess starting at next week. That's I where, think it's gonna that's be where really I was ranking everybody below 40. That's, I didn't want to do it. That's exactly why I but said But for right we now, we have one week of really condensed so play. So I'm sp- like, let me try to take advantage so, so of it. So if you spend all your money on Carson Steele, uh, this could be your shot. Just make sure you put him in the lineup. Yeah, I mean, what's tricky is Kareem Hunt probably playing next week, and you have 
Clyde maybe coming back week five. Dude, even worse. Like he, I, I wouldn't also push a narrative that he'll be back after the IR thing because it's not like an injury that's a four week injury. It's a you know PTSD or whatever they're labeling it. That I mean, he might not play again this year. You you don't really know what Clyde. Speaking so. of which, uh, I just want to let's lay to rest. R.I.P. Uh, the Daenerys Prince thing too. You know. Yeah, Andrew was pushing that narrative heavy. When? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> crazy. You can sit here and deny that. Bro, find the receipts. <laughs> find the receipts. That was Andrew, um, that was Andrew's print. Yeah, so I'm in on Carson Steele. I, you know what? I would almost put money on happening though, because this is just the way fantasy works. I guarantee on Sunday the Chiefs start Samaje Piran. Oh yeah, I, I think all when the end of the game is the end of the game, it will play out how we imagine. But Samaje is going to start. And people are going to lose their minds on Twitter. You got to get. Did you see what you Andy Reid said though? In that role, you know. No. Okay, so I I disagree because Andy Reid said specifically uh, yesterday. He said Carson Steele is going to have the first crack at this job. Yeah. And he is going to be stepping in and has to fill the hole of Isaiah Pacheco. And that that's, that's what Andy that Reid said. That doesn't. He didn't say that he's going to be the guy that takes the field first play. It was just more like first snap, like you know Andy Reid be doing that fuck shit. Yeah, but Andy Reid that, that, also that to like me I said, that to me says exactly what I needed to hear for Andy Reid. Going to put him out there first now. Yeah. Exactly. It's going to be, it is going to be Clyde. Clyde's just going to get activated this week, no reason, and then get That's thrown not in allowed. Might get the whole on the first, IR. Samaje <laughs> might get the whole Khalil first Herder drive, today. too. He'll be out there first play. He gets the whole first Samaje drive. Samaje will be the two-minute, four-minute drill back. He'll be in on, like, very obvious passing down situations. I just question, like, how often that's going to be. How often do they need to be in, like, super passing situations well, where they're, like, on the comeback? The, Although, Atlanta, like, plus four and a, four and a half is a fucking – it's free money this week. So, it's a, tra- awesome. it's a trap. That's a trap line. It's a trap for, for people that are back in KC. That's what I'm I saying. Think, I think but, we're at a sell-high window for Drake London. But, right I mean, the, the, the only upside with P, uh, with P. Ryan is, like, uh, you, you've seen Jet McKinnon in this offense where Smaja doesn't have to be that good in the pass-catching role to have an unbelievable role where you could score a bunch. That's, that's fair – um, but McKinnon's role, I feel like, was never it, – it was good, but it was only, like, on, was, on weeks where he scored two receiving touchdowns. But it was, it was hard to predict. You're yeah. not going to be able to tell me when it's going to be, but and, he might have a, a – he could – Piran could have a week in the, a role of, like, 30% of snaps where he, you catches, were, he catches six to eight balls and two touchdowns. Maybe. Six That's to that eight, offense. Six to eight feels crazy high. Look, with a guy like Rice getting, like, 10, 12 targets The more we talk about this backfield, the Rice more six I want to go into game. ESPN and lower my bids on all of these motherfuckers. Facts. Yeah, no, it's, it's messy out there. Well, I will say I don't want any of them. If you were someone in the off season that was drafting Samaje P Ryan, uh, like in best ball on the Denver Broncos, you are so lucky right now, bro. Like this is best case scenario for that shit. And, and I think we can just uh, get out of this entire tier because it feels it feels like a lot of the same conversations. But our, Jaleel McLaughlin too, uh, just any Denver running back. It's, o- outside it's, of Williams, I don't feel good about. It's gross. And I don't yeah. even feel good about Williams. We were talking about McLaughlin on my other team as like a drop candidate. Like we're if you're in a desperate him. spot, yeah, he's definitely a drop candidate for yeah, sure. Like, um, so we'll we'll round this out. We got Ty Chandler at 37, P Ryan at 38, Tajay at 39, Kenneth Walker. We're just kind of expecting him not to play, so this average has got down there. Carson Steele at 41, him. fake. He's up at 34 probably. Madison 42, <laughs> Rico at 43, Chase Brown 44, Jaleel McLaughlin 45, Breland Allen at 40. Six. Now, we'll get into the deep cuts, which is the end of this video where we each take a guy outside of the top 40 that we think is kind of startable for you. And I'll start with who you guys have at 42. I took Alexander Madison, right, for the same reason that we're like Samir White getting touches, like hasn't been very good. Madison has now scored in back-to-back weeks. They clearly have him to be a part of this game plan. And I think, you know, Vegas versus Carolina is just going to be super running back heavy, right? And maybe it all goes to Zumir Zumir White. Maybe he has 20 carries, but maybe Alexander Madison gets 12 carries and also gets one or two of the goal line opportunities. So I think if you're really, really desperate down here, Alexander Madison, I think, could be used as a flex. Well, I'm taking uh, Dante Foreman. And Foreman, for me, like, uh, as a... (laughs) Listen, I, I have to watch the Browns every single week. Where did that come from last week? Um, I, I actually heard I heard a lot of sentiments that he was going to get more of that role in week one. It just didn't happen. Pissed okay. me off. Um, why is that? Because I have Jerome Ford. Yeah, I mean, I get it. <laughs> I I don't think like I I don't think I'm all that worried about Ford. Uh, it definitely care. It definitely caps his upside though. Uh, like he had ups. He had legitimate upside without that. But I think versus the Giants, like if you if you had Foreman on your team or you were considering adding him. That's about as good of a matchup as you're going to have. And this is where the, the the Cleveland offense is not something right now that any inspires any confidence for anybody. But I think this is a game where they could be up, and if they get up, they could just 
give a ton of carries to the running backs, and Foreman might be someone that's actually decent. And he was more of a longer shot option because at this point I saw you taking steel and, and what you did there. So I'm like, let me see about something in the 50s. I'm like, Ford, uh, Ford doesn't have any, like, guaranteed, you know, like jo- this job is not guaranteed to be him. Yeah. Foreman might have another 18, 20 carries. I, I really like that call because I also think one of the, the problems with Cleveland's offense right now is their tackles still being out. But they are projecting to play at least one of them, if not both of them, back this week, which is a huge boost to the offensive line and and the running game. And, like, Ford doesn't really profile as that in-between-the-tackles grinder. He's, He's like, not. a really good playmaker that can, if you get him out in space, he could break long runs and be a little bit shiftier. But Foreman, like, we saw Foreman be good with Chicago last year. And in this matchup against New York, who's just, you know, just, like, draining fantasy points to opposing running backs. We saw it with, like, Brian Robinson last week. I think Dan Onto Foreman is a really sharp call down there. Yeah. You might be the greatest. Might be. <laughs> But yeah, I might have a Cleveland call for y'all. So, so I was like I said, I was gonna go steal. He's still at forty, but we said he shouldn't be there. So let's just outside of the top forty. Go to another one. Well, yesterday he was forty four, I think. Whatever. But Which is that, it, was, that was the, like the price at a so brick ain't ain't what it was yesterday. You, you don't well, know. I need to y'all don't know this, but you need to know this. Andrews now had to been. He's had to change every deep cut because he doesn't want to follow the rules. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. I got <laughs> pressed last week about be, Justin he, Fields, and Justin Fields still is like. Under fifty percent roster ship on sleeper, so I mean, you flexing about Justin Fields right now don't feel. But I was gonna do that. You made me audible, and I took Sam Darnold. Pretty good call for me. Go, yeah. Now that being and I said, started him based on your suggestion. There you go. Uh, you might be the greatest. This week, my call this week at the running back position. Let's go, Antonio Gibson. What the hell? We talked about New England. We nah, talked I know about why you hate Jets the Jets defense. You said the Jets defense is bad. If uh, you know, Gibson gets a little bit of the same work that he got last week. He's a guy you can throw in the flex. Uh, I think he's still going to have a decent workload. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up there. And uh, in a few hours, the wide receiver rankings version of this same exact video will go live on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed for that. And as we did starting out the video, we will end it this way. Underdog Fantasy has a free square, half a yard for Aaron Rodgers on Thursday night football. Thank you. If you get on there, use code BDGE, you will get a deposit bonus, you will get the free square, and you will get access to the Big Dog membership for the entire season, all right? So we'll see you over there on the website, bdge.co. We love you. Smoochies. Smoochies.